February and now it's the time for the hellebores of course in all their variety available now when I first started they they really didn't have any very many to choose from now it's masses masses here's one with its center boss of stamens and uh, makes a good show more and more hellebores have been developed some with very very large flowers such as this one which is one of the winter angels series it's quite nice to have the flowers looking at you rather than being too too low down coming up the path we come to a winter smelly Sarko cocker, which are planted by the uh, path, so you get the benefit of the scent as you go by. Not on quite such a windy day as it is today. Evergreen. Coming past the Sarko cocker, it's wonderful. I just noticed that these little Crocuses have just seeded themselves beside the path. Notice some of them have fallen over. I suppose they're going over. But it reminds me of when we were walking in a cedar forest in Lebanon. I saw what looked like scraps of uh, tissue, white tissue paper, littering the floor of the uh, forest. And I thought, oh dear, people have been scattering there litter but on close inspection there happened to be colchicums white colchicums which had all fallen over <laughs> coming down towards the copper beach which my patient mrs nicholas gave me to plant now a massive tree with a wonderful color and under it that's great. Harbingers of spring. The crocuses spreading away. Producing such a jolly carpet. Now here we have another underrated shrub, in my opinion, because in February it has the most lovely berries, and that's Orchid petrophonica. This one is the self-fertile form of Rosani. Although this is self-fertile, I'm sure it's helped by having quite a few males about in the garden to produce its amazing array of berries. And on the subject of orcubas, here we have the granddaddy of them all, a tree-like orcuba with very large leaves, orcuba omayensis. From Mount Omei in China. But I've never seen berries on this. I think this must be a male, a male plant. Near the Orcuba is a group of ferns here, which I was always amazed to find were dryopterous, like our native fern, but the fronds are nothing like. Dropterus uh, sibolii comes from Japan and Taiwan. It's mostly evergreen. 
it can get quite tall. It hasn't really got all that big here because it might be just a bit too dry for it. But I've noticed it's um, <laughs> its foliage rather reflects this very large Schefflera, also for Taiwan, Schefflera Taiwan Liena. So these two Taiwanese are growing together. See, there's the lovely happy group of Cyclamineus daffodils. This is the Cyclamen flowered so called daffodils. I always think they are very happy looking. I don't know why? Perhaps because their ears are sort of turned back and they're standing upright, standing to attention in amongst the crocuses. Coming down the path from uh, the Cyclamineus daffodils, here's a little group of ground cover plants given by a friend, woodlanders, with pretty pink flowers. They can be deep pinky purple or white, they're quite variable. This is a nice pink one. This is called Cardamine quinquifolia because it's got five leaves. Per stem. They are somewhat no notorious for being spreaders, but this has been here for years and has really not formed much of a clump, really, considering, of course, the, uh, the dreaded bittercress is part of the same family, and that definitely is a weed that spreads everywhere if you're not careful. Did a bit of slaughtering here. There was a hoe here, yeah. There's one bit of it still right up there. Which had got so tall that in the background there is a magnolia which you could never see. Magnolia obovata. So that's 30 years of growth. Anyway, with any luck, we will be able to see its flowers because it flowers more in the summer, June, July time. But down below here, I just want to show you this clump of ground cover again. This one has got really rather attractive leaves, although it's been, it has been a bit battled about by the terrible east wind we had. Nevertheless, it is a very attractive, large-leafed ground cover. And the individual flowers are, what well, I always think, almost jewel-like. They look as if they, sh they should be made into some sort of a brooch. It has a, a wonderful name, Chrysosplenium. Attractive big hairy leaves. It has a reputation for being a bit invasive, but here it's been oh, 10, 12 years, formed a clump about three meters by two meters, and it's quite happy. Flowers away in February. Nesting in front of Daphne Boloa, which is still going strong. We have a witch hazel called Aurora. It's quite long petals. It's a lovely scent as well. And then further up, the bright yellow witch hazel with much shorter 
Pezzles? Which is called... Angeli. It's good to have it with a dark background, the uh, large leaves of an ilex, holly, and when the uh, sun is getting lower in the, in the afternoon, it lights, lights them up, shows them to the best advantage. Again, unfortunately, you can't smell the lovely witch hazily smell that I can, st standing in amongst them. And just uh, by way of nothing much, some of the dark green background is a holly Ilex Fargesii, which I brought back from China many years ago. Narrow leafed holly. It's lovely to see these plants that were on the mountainside in China, and here they are in the garden doing well. We're also preserving the, the uh, genetic material in case of disasters. This is a male plant and you can see the uh, flower buds developing. Walking through here, the last uh, Hemimelis I'm going to show you, which hazel is a German introduction called Westerstede after the town where the man who introduced it used to have a nursery. It's got nice long bright yellow petals. Thinking of the uh, Cyclamineus daffodils in this uh, group of snowdrops Alwesii. We seem to have one or two interlopers and a couple more seedlings now, so they really are very happy in this garden here. Snowdrops and the daffodils, the hellebores, and a few wood anemones starting up. So we've got more or less spring symphony here. I said earlier how nice it was that to have the hellebores that are looking at you instead of drooping and this clump here is just quite a looking at you in your face clump which you can sort of make out easily whereas in contrast under the very very smelly by Burnham, Berkwoodoy and Russell is this singularly unsatisfactory hellebore. The most intensely doubled and heavy flowers as a result drops to the ground. But chopping them and floating them in water is the answer and then you can see them in all their variety and splendour which I will demonstrate. Well, here we're coming up to an amazing pink willow which everybody comments on as they come past it is an astonishing pink and now it's picked up the raindrops and is just bejeweled by them As I intimated earlier, this is the way we like to display our hellebores floating in a shallow bowl of water. And you can inspect the individual flowers to your heart's content 